Good morning, everybody. John Huber here from the Maryland Education Network. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Curran Commission. It's uh, one of a series of videos I'm doing so that everybody can get an idea of exactly what it is they're, um, they're trying to do here, which you may be for, you may be against. It's, um, you know, it's your decision, but my goal here is to make sure everyone knows exactly what it is that's, uh, that's going on here. As you know, um, if you watched my first video, the Curran Commission is, um, was founded in 2016 and the goal was to um, recommend a series of um, fixes, if you will, for the Maryland education system. They came up with five recommendations and a lot of people would have you believe that these five very simple recommendations are just, um, just that. They're very simple and they're always kind of bulleted points at these five things, but when you dig a little deeper you'll see that there's, there's a lot more going on here than just those five things. Those are just kind of five broad areas. So anyway, we're going to get into a little bit. Um, we try not to talk too much here. Just try and get it over with so you understand exactly what, they're, what we're talking about. The first thing, the first set of um, requirement, or the, the first goal is the, um, or the, the, the first um, topic, if you will, is pre-K. Remember, there's five. Number one, pre-K. So let's talk about that for a second. What they're saying is they want to fully fund, fully fund pre-K for all four-year-olds in the state of Maryland. Essentially, they're adding another grade to school. Instead of adding the 13th grade, they, they do it on the front end, they're, they're adding the pre-K. Um, all four-year-olds and all three-year-olds as well, if you are um, from a family with the um, resources of $75,000 a year or less. According to them, that's the three times the federal poverty level. Um, so it's all four-year-olds and all three-year-olds up to $75,000. And it also includes all three-year-olds up to $150,000, but it's a sliding scale. You get more taxpayer assistance, more government assistance from between $75,000 and $150,000. I think it's $150,000. So the more you make, the more you pay, um, you know, that sort of thing. So ultimately the goal is full pre-K. Um, this is full day, six and a half hour day of pre-K for all four-year-olds and for three-year-olds up to hundred up to seventy-five thousand, and then a sliding scale of um, payment up to um, between seventy-five and one hundred fifty. Hidden in the report somewhere, it does say that all of this is 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 voluntary. So they're not going to take you to court if you don't send your kid to pre-K, according to to what I've read. Um, so that's that's another thing. So along with this goes a lot of other things as well. All right, so one of the things is they have to significantly expand um, some things that are already in place. For example, there's three particular things that they talk about. One is called Judy Centers. I don't know if you've heard of these. I'll be honest with you, I haven't heard of them until recently. I've been digging around. These are these um, you know, physical places where um, pre-K students go, and they service um, everyone from um, all children from zero to five years old. Um, and they're going to significantly expand Judy Centers, which means essentially a hundred. They're proposing 135 new Judy Centers. These are physical locations. They're proposing 30 new family support centers, and they are also increasing, uh, proposing significant in funding in the infant and toddlers program. Major, major um, um, providing of, of services to um, the pre-K zero to zero to five. Um, year old students and their goal for these Judy Centers is to have one in every Title I, I don't know what's every one in Title I school or every Title I district it has to do, it's kind of connected to Title I so you know the lower income areas that's where they want to put these Judy Centers they want 135 new ones all right? and ultimately their goal is to use the what's called the R4K which is the readiness for kindergarten assessment to use that as the assessment to see that the children are ready and prepared to enter kindergarten. So that's the goal, is to, is, and that's their way of doing it, is to expand the Judy Centers, the Family um, Resource Centers, and the Infants and Toddlers Program through, the, through what I was just saying, for all four-year-olds and three-year-olds, and even some below that, you know, based on, you know, some of the Family Resource Centers and whatnot, um, to get them to assess through the, the, the R4K assessment to be prepared for kindergarten. We're talking six and a half hour days, um, and then we're also talking about a combination. This is interesting how they how they put this: a combination of both public and um, community, what they call community-based or private um, 
companies essentially to provide these pre-K and um, care with the R4K assessment. What they're, what they're saying is, is that there, there's a combination of the, um, the, government, the, the government regulated and the private fund, but in order to, or the, the private industry, but in order to do that, okay, it will take significant changes in the laws of the state of Maryland. So now they're going to have to go back and they're going to have to revamp the laws to update the regulations for these companies to provide this pre-K care. Um, and what it would take for participating providers to be, um, you know, credentialed, if you will, to be able to provide these services. What they've come up with, there's, there's this standard called an EXCELS, E-X-C-E-L-S, -E -E I forget exactly what it stands for, but it is a, it is a credentialing um, platform for um, providers to reach certain levels of accredit, uh, accreditation. Um, and they will have to meet a level three out of, and it goes from a, a one to five. They have to meet a level three at the beginning, and then within five years, they have to all meet a level five certification on the Excel. So we're talking about changing legislation, changing laws, changing the credentialing programs in order to do that. We're also talking about expanded um, pre-day, or um, excuse me, um, extended day programs for all of these. So not only are we talking about the six and a half hour school day, but we're also talking about uh, pre, uh, before school care and after school care. Um, so it, it's quite expansive in, in that range as well. School construction. In, in the midst of all this somewhere there's this one little line that says prioritize school construction. So according to them it's going to be a priority because as you can imagine now that these you know tens of thousands of students are going to be heading to pre-k for three-year-olds and four-year-olds now we're going to need buildings to house these programs and their, their way of addressing that very is just a simple little statement saying to prioritize school construction because now all the districts are going to come running saying hey you want us to have all these programs you want us to to do all these kids that or um, to all these programs for these young kids, these um, three and four year olds, and that's fine. But where are we going to do it? So now we have to build buildings, so, or or wings of buildings, and, and different um, additions to buildings, and you know modific modification of, of facilities. So that in itself is is going to be a huge issue. That's how they address that with the one little sentence. And if you're like me, you start thinking of things like, well, what about transportation? Well, there's one little, one, one or two little sentences in there about transportation. And what it says is that, in general, they use a formula to determine what the transportation budgets are. The formula goes, has to do with, um, with kids, or, or the, the number of kids. So they say we have X amount of students, and, and I'm not exactly sure how it's all, it's all put in, a, put in a hopper, and they come out with this formula, and they say it's, the transportation budget will be X amount of money per student. And that's how they do it. So now they're saying that we have to include, or that the state has to include, the kindergarten or the pre-K four-year-olds and the three-year-olds who are in these programs in the transportation budget. And if you're like me, you start thinking, well, I'm not so sure I can see those um, good old-fashioned yellow cheese wagon buses um, with three-year-olds on them. I'm not so sure that that's a good idea. I, you know, I'm no transportation expert. I'm going to start digging into this a little bit. But something tells me we're going to have to buy new new modes of transportation for these kids. I, I can't say, but the real interesting fact is, then it says in the report, it says that um, the, the more that the programs begin to become in sync with parents' work schedules, the need for transportation, the need for transportation may be reduced. So they're kind of hinting that there will be a lot of upfront costs for Transportation, but in the pay, but as it goes on, there will be less. I'm not so sure that's the case, and I'm not exactly sure what the, the, the thought behind that was, but that's what they're suggesting, or that, that's what they're suggesting. All right, the pre K certification in early childhood, um, certification in early childhood for potential teachers is now going to become a priority, according to, to the report, and there's going to be tuition assistance and there's going to be a lot more coordination between the public school districts and the um, universities who, who, um, who educate these, these early childhood education majors. So that's the thing, there's tuition assistance for early childhood education majors because you can imagine 
what the workforce will need to look like as this is fade in, as this is faded in. I'm not sure where, so sure where all these teachers are, are going to come from. Um, they also say that um, they will implement the R4K, the readiness for kindergarten assessment, as their main mode of assessment to determine whether or not these children are ready for pre-K. So, in review, all right, there you're talking about expanding pre-K from four-year-olds to three-year-olds. You are talking about, um, I'll just try and give you a quick synopsis here, four-year-olds, all four-year-olds and three-year-olds of up to 100 and, or up to 75,000 with a sliding scale up to 150, six and a half hour days, combination of private and public um, providers, which means a whole new set of regulations, more oversight, and we're meeting the level three on Excels instead of level five, extended day programs before and after those, those um, six and a half hour days, prioritize school construction, um, transportation, included um, child care subsidy funds available so if you have a child in the three or four year old they're also going to start providing child care funds um, and then they suggest that this may be reduced you know as you know this business is maybe reduced as we go along um, certification and early childhood tuitions for local um, colleges and universities that sort of thing tuition assistance for early childhood education majors and ultimately the readiness for um, kindergarten assessment to do it all. So those are the four things. Expanding the Judy Centers, expanding the